Alex, welcome to the show. Hey, good to be here. Yeah, same here. Guess what I'm drinking? What? I am drinking a cup of warm Phil's coffee. Man, parent life juice. <laughs> it really is. It, is. it says, is. if you see it here in the, in the small print, it says, tell a friend. So I just wanted to tell you Dude, what I'm drinking. I'm grateful. Am I a friend? Or you're just trying to make me jealous? Did you feel special for a little bit? <laughs> I had jealousy too and envy because I wanted your coffee. <laughs> yes, you're my friend, of course. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm bringing Alex back. Um, for those that don't know, Alex, we did a previous podcast episode. You were probably my first podcast episode, Alex. No, oh, yeah, I'm glad to be back. Yeah, I I think I did. I think we did. We did two or three. No, we did like four podcast episodes. It no, might even be five. Three. No, we did three around visual design. And how to be emotionally aware as a designer. And um, one more. Seats three. And one more. But then we did one on branding guidelines. Because I remember I had a prospective client. Oh, that's and, true. And other people, yeah. other leads that were asking, what are branding guidelines? What are style guides? And I'm like, this perfect opportunity to bring in Alex and talk about oh, what yeah. it is. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah. I was never really good at math. So maybe four of them. I, I trust you. <laughs> I. I'm just here in the in my living room area, um, just drinking a cup of coffee and just knocking out website projects. But anytime um, people bring up what is a branding guideline or style guide, I just send them our, our podcast interview about that. <laughs> because you, the way you answered it was to the point and the importance of consistency and quality across different platforms. So I just send them that. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. I hope someone learned something from it. Hey, did you see my office? Look at this. I actually hung up pictures after my wife just got angry at me and goes, there's nothing on your walls. <laughs> so you just put them up? I tell me, put, tell I me, put, what pictures do you have there? Um, some concept art I did. Definitely, I love superheroes. Uh, there, That's the Wendy's project up there I worked on. That was, that was an awesome one. And uh, yeah, I'm just putting up pictures my wife was like hey you know what you don't put any of your artwork up in the house i said well it's kind of weird to have monsters and creatures in the living room all over the place alex did a project for wendy's for those that didn't know when i was last he's year so, he's so nonchalant like it's no biggie you know no it, it was a big deal it was awesome it was one of the <laughs> best projects i've ever worked on they gave me freedom to be an artist i enjoyed seeing um, your creative work with that on that PDF that you sent. Mm. That was really good. It was very detailed too, at the table of contents and everything. Well, that's what you get for working with a, a very good design or marketing company. I mean, it was a commercial design company mm -hmm. or marketing, and um, they work directly with Wendy's. So um, the producer in there was incredible. What's your favorite um, design that you've done so far for 2020? I think that, one. That, um, one? that one. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it is my favorite. I mean, I've done this year, it's been more corporate stuff. And I've worked on a couple of books, which is cool. You know, it, it gets me off of doing the logos and websites yeah. and, and branding stuff. But um, yeah, I, I, to this day, I think that was by far my favorite because I got uh -huh. a lot of freedom to be able to. Um, it's the way the producer worked is how I would work with an art team. Mm. You know, you don't get in the way, you don't micromanage. It's not like the first six months of the year when I was an art director, which I wanted, you know, everyone wanted to pull their hair out. She just, she understood. All right. Because micromanaging does, with, does mess up creativity and a flow. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't I understand like, oh, why people micromanage. Yeah. Especially if you're hiring professionals, that know it better than you like why would you micromanage why would i micromanage one is is like i think when i first got into the industry it's usually because of fear hmm. you're afraid that you're not going to make your project 
And then that overflows of the people you work with, even if you're not managing a team, you know, because what ends yeah. up happening is, and, it, and it, it, what ends up I can happening, see that. yeah, it just, people just, and it doesn't help because I've been on both sides when I was my, I was doing it with people. It doesn't help people. They don't feel trusted. When you start yeah. micromanaging people, they don't feel trusted. I can see that. My wife, I'm still working that out with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you're building the trust factor there right? i'm just kidding let me know Ray, let me know, let me know how it goes tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah after the podcast i'll let you know once this is released <laughs> yes now i want to i before we get more into this because this is really good and i do have a handful of questions for you mm-hmm. um i want to start by giving our listeners and viewers just a short bio of who you are alex and then we'll dive right into the questions Sure. So for those that don't know, Alex, a uh, good friend of mine, he resides in Silicon Valley with his wife and identical triplet teen daughters, okay? 25 years in the industry as a digital artist, started his career in video games and has expanded to work with businesses and companies outside of the entertainment industry. He is the owner of Concept Art Factory, which is a design and branding company in Mountain View, California. Alex, thank you again for your time. My first question that I have for you is what inspired you to choose a career in branding and visual design? Why not just straight up social media marketing or SEO or PPC or advertisement? Mm. And I something different, I guess is what I'm trying to say. When I was five years old, I already knew what I wanna do for a career. Five? We had no social media. We had none of that stuff. Five years old, you said? Yes. You know, I started my career since 25 years in the industry. You know, I started at the age of five. I'm just kidding. So it, so I knew that I think, I think, you know, every kid has their dream of wanting to be an astronaut or mm-hmm. a police officer or, you know, or scientist or whatever, right? Me, out or a fireman. I knew I wanted to be an artist for a living. I actually was there and watched the original Star Wars. When I wow. saw that in the theaters, I went, my jaw just dropped. And, you know, and I had my mom take me all the time. So I knew I wanted to be an artist for a living. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know how I was going to be able to do it. That's what inspired me. Well, I got you it wasn't cool. necessarily first being a branding or visual designer. I didn't even know what that word meant. Five years old, come on. I draw pictures with a pencil and paper. So you're really, people. you're really good at drawing. Like when I draw stick figures, you draw like <laughs> the Mona Lisa. So wh- what age did you start sketching or start getting good at that? My mom told my sisters and my brothers told me the youngest of eight. So I was, um, they said I started drawing, um, at the age of two stick figures and even box cars. Wow. At the age of two. So I said, wow, all those times they probably dropped me really helped. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I think I just had it. I, I just had this artistic background since I was a little kid. Yeah. And it, yeah. And he used it a lot to cope with life in general. You know, it was just my escape. That's and I love it. That's good. That's interesting because a lot of people don't maybe realize or you know, have their parents tell them what their talents are or skills are. And the fact that you had that at a very, very early age, um, that's rare and it's awesome. Well, you know, everyone has a coping mechanism, you know, uh, because, you know, we grew up poor in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Even when we came to the United States, I was like, I grew up in, I grew up in a low income household living in government housing. So, you know, there was a point where Wow. My mom, I mean, I have these stories because it just ties into why I became an artist because it was like my mom's like, Alex, no, you, you've been getting beat up every day when you're five years old. So I was like, whoa, maybe that's the reason why I was drawing all the time. I can draw. I would draw all the time. My mom was, I would, I sometimes I've heard stories I would draw for 10 hours and my mom would have to put food in front of me. We'd have so, a lot of money. So she'd bring home pencils from work and type yeah. paper. And I would just start cranking and just drawing. So drawing for you was more like a hobby, but your escape. Is that right? Yeah, it was my way of coping with hardships. Interesting. Yeah. And, and so it became hmm. a passion for me, but it was just something I've always done. 
you know that's I've, interesting yeah i wonder if people that are that are listening or watching this on youtube um what they think about when they they experience hardships or what do they go to when they escape and if they see that as a passion or um something that they can make it into a career like you alex it's weird because um i think it what helped a lot too was um uh i think this ties into what your question was about why what inspired me mm -hmm. i love stories so that's why i love star wars so much and i collected a ton of comic books right. and if i look back back I then right if you think about it superheroes movies definitely characters have their own brand superman with his s batman with his you know, bat in his chest right and then if you look at wolverine yeah. he has his claws and then an incredible hulk right you go well he has no insignia well he has green skin so he has radioactive sunscreen whatever you know that's part of branding so that's, that's true what, yeah and then so when you when you brand or design things i think i've always had this thing of being able to tell stories visually because i was um I had a learning disability growing up. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, I had some dyslexia. Um, definitely had a hard time in class with ADD and probably ADHD because that's why I drove my teachers crazy. But one thing I knew I could do was draw. And um, I just awesome. kept practicing and practicing. Yeah. So, you know. That's awesome. Even then, that in itself is a gift. You know, ADD, dyslexia, all that. I mean, a lot of people view it as a weakness, but if you play it to your strengths, I mean, that's powerful. It's a yeah, different perspective. A lot of people don't see it as a, as a different perspective though. Yeah. I think at the time I was just insecure growing up because I had a very difficult time, you know, reading out loud. I would totally try to go to the bathroom every time they had everyone read it out loud. I'd stutter mm. words to be jumbled up. Um, I was social, but at the same time, I was very afraid of, um, being in front of the class or reading because right. I knew that was always going to be a weakness. I mean, even in my twenties, this is humbling. I mean, I got, and I got my career, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, my twenties and my, my, my reading level is probably in third grade, fourth grade at best, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, yeah. I was able to get by, but Thanks now I read a lot that. more. Yeah. I've, I've gotten past the Dr. Seuss books. <laughs> I'm still Dr. Seuss books. <laughs> oh, I remember those <laughs> because I'm reading them to Dustin. There you go. That's yeah, and, and so so even with those weaknesses, right? You know, what comic books help me out with and, and watching things visually. I I learned visually too. It showed yes. me how to flow with storytelling because I was not not a I was a, not a very I was wow. That's reading. interesting. The storytelling part. Yeah, I didn't think it, about that with comic books. Yeah, because what, all it is is a movie is like a telling a story with frame by frame, a comic book is you're missing frames and you're putting significant parts to it. The next thing is if you do an ad, it's less frames. Mm -hmm. And in a logo is one frame. It's more like a, a, I always tell other designers this, a logo is like the movie poster of your company to get people interested. Mm -hmm. So every time I see things, it's kind of like, I, I always use movie analogies, you know, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you can, I, yeah. And each yeah, movie I, has its own story behind it. So that's awesome. Yeah, you know. Did you ever thought whenever you were growing up and you mm -hmm. got, you know, good at sketching, good at drawing, good at doing all these things, did you ever think about that you could do it as a career or you didn't know about doing it as a career at that point? I started to notice it. I would start mm -hmm. looking at comic book artists. I was one of those guys that... <sighs> Rest in peace, comic book collection. <laughs> I lost it somewhere else. We had one of the best comic book collections ever. I was the guy who put my comics in cardboard backing, plastic, and open it. Each page would be open, right? But I Dang. admired the artist, and I said, I want to do that one day. So I've always had this dream since, what, um, fifth grade, sixth grade of wanting to be a comic book artist. That's awesome. And I had a lot of inspiring artists, and, um, and I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, my mom and my brother, George, actually um, believed in me. But definitely, my mom never saw a report card in high school. I just signed it myself. <laughs> <laughs> it like, but I can draw, mom. <laughs> you know, it was scary. I'm doing good, you know, I'm doing and, good mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, my family's not tiger family, tiger mom, tiger dad. But, you know, it's not like an ideal thing where someone, when you go and right. say, hey, I want to be an artist for a living. Yeah. 
I mean, could you imagine when I asked, you know, what is your, you know, and I asked my wife, hey, uh, what, and the dad goes, what does Alex do for a living? He's an artist. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it got. <laughs> yeah, if it was a lawyer, like, what, why isn't the ring on your finger when it's the wedding, you know, or, you know. It's so. funny, they just automatically assumed a starving artist, right? <laughs> Yeah, I've in this industry when I was starving. <laughs> right. And it helped build my character, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Humble beginnings, it's man. It's crazy. It's, it's, yeah. all, it's all worth it, though. Now, you've worked for well known companies here in Silicon Valley as an art director and senior lead artist at companies like Disney, um, Konami Digital Entertainment, and others that I can't think of just off the top of my mind. How did you work your way up the ladder? And I ask that because there's people that are looking, you know, to grow and learn in their career. Mm, I couldn't, wouldn't call it a ladder. It was more like the Disneyland teacup ride, which sucks because it almost makes me throw up and a roller coaster put together. Call the teacup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, because you're just spinning in circles. Um, I, mm. I, I, I think with the way I worked my way up is I just worked hard. Uh, and one of the things I did was um, I took a risk. I was going to junior college trying to get a, a, um, a degree in industrial design and graphic design, but I just couldn't sit in class. I mean, I did okay in my design classes. Mm -hmm. in the other classes I was doing horrible. I was like, wow, I was just I was just an extension of how bad I was doing in high school except for design classes. My design teachers love me. Um, so I said, hey, I'm going to take some time off of school. I'm going to focus in on my artwork and just become an artist. And um, I, so I had, and I, you know, I think that's what built my way up was always the spark of starting something and go, hey, I'd rather try than never, than, than live my life with regret and never doing it. Mm. So I didn't know I was going to be able to do that. You know, I was yeah. like, um, I, and I didn't have any other choice. So once I got into industry, I got, I was very fortunate. I was connecting with different people. I was nice to one person. I worked for this small software company that just shut down. I was working part-time with them, but I was friends with one person. And, and in my first job, I got to work on a, a video game. Um, my first video game job is Magic the Gathering. And I learned how to do 3D nice. and working on the job. So my school was life in general. And what I did was I just kept building my craft. And um, I love that. So yeah, when, you, when you said work hard, what does that mean? Because working hard might be different to me than it is to you. Well, there's two things. One, I just kept building my craft. But one part I felt like if, if and I just kept getting better and better in what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think when I got, and even what got me to be able to get raised up was learning from my mistakes, but at the same time, um, doing the things I didn't want to do in it because, you know, it's like, it's like me trying to do taxes in our house, which I did last year. And I cried and told my wife, you're the greatest human being ever for all those years you've been doing our taxes. So, so I think that's one of the things is where people will see like, Hey, well, Alex is Alex willing to do this kind of work. And, and I think that's what helps raise you up. You know, there are things that I felt like I would have been raised up much faster, but I, I, but I think that's one of the things where, Hey, you know, it doesn't matter. Even if I went out, even when I was a manager, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll throw the trash out for a startup company and make coffee and get everyone angry because Alex is the worst coffee ever. So that's what, that was my, the, my next question is, yeah. which is just to dig a little bit more is what is that or those things that you didn't like doing, but you did either way. Mm, one was um, definitely one of the positions I was being an art manager and organizing everyone's art or doing designs, which I felt like it was elementary or doing um, projects or assignments I didn't like. That every artist goes through that. Every designer doesn't even have, even a programmer, right? Engineers, mm -hmm. I don't want to even work on that tool or I don't want to work on right. that. And I think the willingness to just go, hey, this is my job and I'm, I'm supposed to get it done and do the best I can, despite how much I'm hating this part of it. And that's what, and another thing that got me through too is reminding myself like where I came from. You know, I didn't do well in school. 
Mm-hmm. And I was very, I'm very fortunate to be able to do this for a living, you know, to be an artist for a living. Right. You know, my dream for five years old came true. That is true. Not a lot yeah. of people have their dreams come true like that. <laughs> but it's also cool it, that. It, 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 oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. No, I said it, it's also cool <laughs> that yeah. um, just tying back what you're saying is even if you don't like it, and maybe I'm adding words to it, it doesn't matter how you feel, just do it because it's an opportunity for you to learn and grow for projects that maybe you don't like. Yeah, that. that's true. I think I think that's what helped me to later on to have my to to start my own business and work for myself mm-hmm. because one of the things I started to realize is like um I may have not had a lot of schooling but I did want to learn from people in the industry it took the time just to be a learner mm-hmm. right and I thought about it I said wait a minute as much as I'm a boss for somebody I'm working for somebody yeah because as a designer your your role is to design things and create things visually for your client to be able to tell their story and do the best possible job you can with all the skill sets that you have. Hmm. And, our, and one of the things I, I remember, I don't know if I, I think I heard this from somebody. I said, Hey, you know, if you don't want to be a designer, you don't want to get critiqued, then be a fine artist and work, do artwork in a gallery because you'll always be working for somebody, no matter what position or status you are in this industry. That's true. And if you don't like serving people or you don't want to see do the best for others this is going to be a very hard industry for people to continue on because it's tough you get more work shot down than than accomplished i mean my linkedin profile is more like a facebook page no one sees the the, the tough things that you go through it's, it's it's in all areas of life yeah it seems like if if you don't like serving people then you shouldn't be in the service industry that's what it is. <laughs> you yeah. shouldn't be providing a service. You should be doing something else behind a desk or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it, I mean, it's not like I don't get my frustrations as a designer. Like when when a client tells that's me that's normal. That's like, oh my gosh, yeah, that is the worst decision ever. But I go, I work for you. I'm going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> you see it for yourself. But you know, be you, you'll be surprised too that sometimes what you think looks good, and this is what I think. I have to fight my stubbornness a lot hmm. is when a client gives you a, um, a suggestion or an idea, which may sound stupid in your mind, sure. but you don't try it and you end up going, Oh my gosh, that's actually better than what I thought it would, than what I was thinking it should be. <laughs> I get that all the time. Yeah. yeah, It makes sense. And it's good to run it by other people too. Right. Because we only see one way um, when it comes to projects. So it's good to get additional advisors um, looking at your projects, I oh, did I have do that a, all the time. Yeah, no, I love that. Another question that I have for you, Alex, is who is your ideal client? Who's my ideal client? Um, I love working with. This is surprising as much as I work with big businesses and stuff. I like working with um, companies who don't who have or just starting out or rebranding their company. Because you know what's what's amazing about that is I love learning because I love putting stories together. So people ask me, say, Alex, are you a, a designer, a digital artist? And I said, I'm more of a visual storyteller. And I do a lot of research on companies, mm-hmm. um, um, who their competitors are, why they have these companies. Because I have I have a branding um, guideline I send to when I do logos or designs. It's extensive. Right. Because the more I find out, there are specific things that you will see that will tell the story for, for each company, a movie, a comic book, a logo. Hmm. The more you know in that background, you're not going to create the same thing like, hey, what if someone wanted to build another Facebook, right? I mean, right. I mean everyone knows Facebook or, or another software, some kind of software company that does like, you know, some, some particular gidgy gadget or whatever. And, it, and, and then they already have that market, but how are you going to be able to tell a story where what makes yours stand out differently? Mm-hmm. Because you can copy another person, but you go, the more you know your client, the better it is for, for you to understand, oh, they do have something different. 
And that's, I love the problem solving because you go, oh, okay, that's, there's, this is out, this is out now, but okay, let me design this, something mm-hmm. that's really different. That's why I like, I like working with companies who want to really rebrand their company or startups, but yeah. definitely, yeah. Now, does the industry really matter to you or no? No. Nah, I mean. You have a favorite industry? Oh, definitely. It's, um, I love video games. Video game industry. <laughs> it's it's always it's, it's always been my reason I started in that industry. Yeah, but, that's what um, you're more comfortable with too. Yeah, I'm, I'm really comfortable with it. Um, but I'm I'm really appreciating um, because I've been doing a lot of corporate works too. You know, there'll be times that I would get projects like I have at Wendy's or some other project where I need to do some kind of visual high fidelity work for them because that's a storytelling too. You know how 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 they're going to put their ads up digitally in print. And not as much print now. How is it going to translate? Mm. Um, visually, in video game industry, translated so well into other industries, mostly with app and mostly with software applications and web development stuff. Now, so. for those that are interested in your services, you know, branding, design services, um, how can they get in contact with you? Oh, okay. They can just go ahead and send me an email at uh, info at conceptartfactory.com and definitely check out our web on our website, www.conceptartfactory.com. All one word. Okay. Oh, good. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, I'm definitely on Instagram. And then you have per- your online portfolio on your website too? Yes. I'll be adding more stuff with that. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, there's um, um, Love it. Yeah. So I'm excited, you know, I'm always looking forward to updating it. Yeah. And those uh, that are listening and watching this, um, I'll definitely put his website in the description of our YouTube video description. Nice. And then um, also, last question, do you have any advice to our listeners and viewers? Well, you know, the advice I would have, um, I think I would have grown faster, but I love, you know, I don't regret anything. The hardships and the challenges got me to where I'm at today and build the character that I have. But I think one of the things, if I were to give some advice, would be, you know, don't let fear get in the way of your dreams. Mm. It'll say a dream if you don't actually try to pursue it. And it's much, much more painful to live a life of regret. Yeah. Of knowing whether if it's going to come true or not. That's deep. I can always and say to myself, like, hey, you know, at least I tried. If it didn't work out, that's great. Yeah, no regrets. Yeah. So I think that's one of the things I really, you know, try to instill, even with my daughters, because, you know, I mean, I can be like total, totally afraid of the unknown or take a risk. Because mm-hmm. I probably, I wish I would have started my own, you know, started my own company 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I tell people that, hey, if you have that desire and that dream to, that you feel like you can do something, just do it, you know? And, mm-hmm. the, and your failure is never going to be ever fatal because you learn from it. I wouldn't have been the artist I am drawing this stuff, doing yeah. all this stuff if I didn't go through my failures and learn from them. I love that you put all your stuff on on, on the wall. <laughs> I definitely did it before this YouTube channel. I knew you were going to interview me. Like, oh, I better put something up. You're like, oh like, gosh, I got to look like a professional. <laughs> I'm like, man, and then my wife is all on me about that. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, Lorraine. They can look at my action figures. I have some action figures over here too. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and those uh, that are listening, Alex is definitely doing some design uh, work for us. Uh, so he's high level um, professional. So definitely check out his website if you haven't yet. And then another... One, I'm just still thinking about like, just don't letting, it's almost like don't let fear paralyze you from reaching your goals and dreams. And that's really, really, really good feedback, Alex. Yeah. And, you, and, and I think one of the things I think I brought up to earlier, I think it's very key that you know this, despite all the weaknesses. I mean, if someone like me who couldn't, who had learning disabilities, couldn't read very well, mm. it's, it's, it's so powerful when you have a vision and a dream. It over, it actually over, it compensates for what you're lacking inside 
due to sheer will and faith. Hmm. And you know, it seems just, like you have a lot of self-awareness too, like knowing who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses. I appreciate you sharing that uh, mm-hmm. and being courageous about sharing that about your disabilities and, you know, mental, emotional health challenges and stuff, because those are real and they're insecurities um, that we live with, but it's not what defines us, mm-hmm. which is everything you're sharing about, which is powerful and inspiring, man. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It definitely is. I mean, people don't get connected. People won't get connected with one another unless you find out the whole story, their whole story. Hmm. You know, I think that's the reason why the hero's journey is such a huge thing. That's the reason why I love Star Wars so much and the journey of Luke Skywalker from being this farm boy to screw up in Empire Strikes Back and redemption as a master after Return of the Jedi. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, and I'm also seeing like just sharing vulnerability is 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 big too like if you put vulnerability with mm-hmm. storytelling oh my gosh that's super powerful yes because people can connect with with another person and that's what branding and design is interesting it's it's not showing a product it's connecting with people's emotions their heart and their feelings you'd be and surprised other- how many people don't know that or they think they know it but they're not really connected with their own emotions. So they don't really go that deep. Yeah. And that's what makes you, makes a good designer. Someone who actually understands that, that no matter what product you you design or service, you're going to design for someone else or movie or video game. Mm -hmm. What is the emotional connection you're going to have with those people? What are they first going to see with this one logo? It's, it gets easier, the more complex it is, but the more, but the simpler it is, imagine, do you notice it's harder? Because a logo is probably one of the hardest things because you have one image. Right. And that's, that's like, people, why do you charge so much for logos? I said, you don't understand. I have one chance to get your audience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So it's easy to make something complicated, but it's much harder to make something simple. Mm. Because when things are simple and people can identify and see the see it, it connects with their heart a lot easier. Mm-hmm. You know, when you look at your your son, right? When I look at my daughters, I'm like, they're teenagers. They're so complex now. I miss the days when I can just look at them. You're you're so cute, and you don't talk back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I think of it that way. You know, and I think that's that. If we if we connect design with life, it's awesome. Just like a baby, you're excited because you see the baby, but you're going to grow with it. That's how your company should be. That's how your design should be. Mm. Does, the, does the designer that you have think that way? Right. Or if they never had a baby. Oh, oh yeah. Man. I got my wife. If they never had time. a baby, if you if you've never been a parent, <laughs> do you understand? Yeah. Well, That's a awesome. different question. Yeah, or it's even owning a puppy or just even in general mm. or even in, and sometimes you go, well, you never had a kid, Alex. Weren't you a kid? Mm. What, what attracted you as a child? What are the first things, you know? And I think just psychology. In their shoes. Yeah. And I think my mental health, because all the help I've gotten to learn more about my own mental health, helped me understand the psychology a lot more behind design. That's uh, awesome. How, yeah, your, the difference between your frontal lobe and your rear. And how that's, the, you know, how, which one you want to connect with, you know, you, you want to go, oh, yeah, I want to use the reptilian brain first, the one that reacts right away. Hmm. So, and then I think, I think in a way, in a, you know, I think that you brought up a great point. It, it, it was a blessing to have my, uh, my mental health challenges and my learning disabilities. One, it taught me empathy, but it's, I learned more about myself, but it helped me become a better designer in connecting with other people. And it making much yeah. more deeper, deeper and better designs. I agree. Was, yeah, I agree. Well, Alex, we're out of time. That was awesome. That was yeah. It was a lot of knowledge you you dumped on us, man. Oh, this man. is Thanks great. For me back. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy our conversations. I know easily we can, instead of thirty minute, forty minutes, we can easily you know stretch it to an hour or two because. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to marketing or design or website, it just 
we can talk about it all day. We're passionate about it. We love it. And that's the reason why I love interviewing professionals in their own industry because yeah. they get it and they know the lingo and they're passionate about this stuff, right? They yeah. They have a ton of experience. Um, so I'm happy to bring you on. This is totally my pleasure on, on having you on as a guest, man. Oh, man. It's always great. Yeah. I Thanks can't for wait for you to do the... My favorite superhero is Superman, so I can't wait for you to do artwork on Superman. <laughs> oh, man. That was my first favorite superhero. <laughs> oh, man. It was my first and only. You should let me know because I do have I do have a Justice League painting. Oh, yeah. You got to send me a picture of that. Shoot uh, me a I'll text. Send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. All right, so man. You have a great one, all right? All right. Take care. You too, man. Bye-bye.